Hello everyone. Welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about the procedure of oropharyngeal airway insertion and techniques. And it is a type of artificial airway. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notification. Let's get into the topic. Oropharyngeal airway is also called oral airway, OPA or the Gudel pattern airway. An oropharyngeal airway is an airway adjunct used to maintain or open the airway by stopping the tongue from covering the epiglottis and hence for this purpose oropharyngeal airway is used. It's mainly used to prevent the obstruction of the airway by the tongue and epiglottis. Patient who are unconscious with no cough or gag reflex insert an OPA or NPA that is oropharyngeal airway or nasopharyngeal airway to maintain the air patency. Following are the parts of oropharyngeal airway. Flange. The flange rests against the lips. This design protects against aspiration into the airway. Next is the bite portion. Next comes body. The body of the airway curves over the tongue. Next is the tip. The tip is the distal most part of the airway towards the base of the tongue, which acts as the air channel. Next comes uses of oropharyngeal airway. It's used to maintain open airway to prevent endotracheal tube occlusion, to prevent tongue bite, to facilitate suction and sampling. This advantages of oropharyngeal airway includes oropharyngeal airway gets easily dislodged from the mouth if it is not secured properly. Incorrect size of OPA can push tongue back and occlude airway, either it may be smaller in size or larger in size. It's not recommended for head or facial trauma patients. It is not tolerated by conscious patients because it stimulates gag reflex. Next comes how to choose the correct size of OPA. There are two external facial measurements. You may have to take an OPA and do the following measurements. First is from the center of the mouth or center of the lips that is incisor's teeth to the angle of the jaw that is edge of the mandible. Next is from the corner or angle of the mouth to the ear lobe. Measuring oropharyngeal airway is very important because as we discussed before, incorrect size either smaller or larger may lead to complications. For oropharyngeal airway insertion, the following equipments are needed. Oropharyngeal airway of appropriate size, tongue blade or tongue depressor, clean gloves, suction apparatus. Let's discuss about the OPA insertion techniques. Follow universal precautions, perform hand hygiene and wear appropriate PP. First is positioning. Sniffing position. The sniffing position can be achieved in most patients with a pillow and chin lift. In case of trauma patients, apply the jaw thrust and not the chin lift maneuver. Next is suctioning if indicated. Perform oral suction to clear the secretions, vomitus or foreign material from the oropharynx. Next is selection of oropharyngeal airway. Select the appropriate size of the oropharyngeal airway by using external facial measurements as we discussed before. Next is insertion. Open mouth using crossed finger technique. Insert the airway into the mouth with a tip pointed to the roof of the mouth that is concave up. When you look at the picture, the concave portion of the airway touches the roof of the mouth that is palate. 
Once half of the oropharyngeal airway has been inserted, rotate 180 degree over the tongue. This technique prevents the airway from pushing the tongue backwards during insertion. Then, Gently advance the oropharyngeal airway until the flange is resting against the patient's lips and the colored bite block is positioned in between the patient's teeth. Alternatively, there is one more method that is hold the tongue down and forward with the tongue depressor and insert airway directly with the tip pointed to the floor of the mouth that is concave down. Use of the tongue depressor prevents the airway from pushing the tongue backward during insertion. Next comes the practical nursing alerts for OPA insertion. In case if the mouth is difficult to open for oral pharyngeal airway insertion, we use nasopharyngeal airway. In case if the patient is conscious or semi-conscious. The patients may activate gag reflex and result in vomiting or laryngospasm. If gagging or vomiting occurs, remove the airway immediately to prevent aspiration. If needed, hyperoxygenate the patient and suction the pharynx. In case if the size of the oropharyngeal airway is small or big, if the airway is too small, it pushes the tongue and further causes obstruction. If it is too large, an airway may obstruct the larynx by pushing the epiglottis back. And one more point very important to remember is positioning of the patient during oropharyngeal airway insertion. To prevent trauma to the mouth during insertion, perform head tilt, chin lift or jaw thrust technique to open the patient's mouth wide. In case of trauma patients, jaw thrust maneuver is used. So this is all about today's video regarding oropharyngeal airway insertion and techniques. If you find this video useful, please like it and please subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.